Yeah, I mean, the, the, one of the great benefits I think that will come from a complete banking union will be that it should solve the problem uh, of financial fragmentation. And, and Pat showed a graph that, uh, that showed you that financial fragmentation. It showed lending or uh, borrowing costs from small and medium-sized enterprises. And what we saw there is that the borrowing costs for uh, SMEs were about 1.5% higher in, in Ireland than in Germany. They were about 3% higher in Spain. So we have the peripheral members of the Euro, European, uh, of the Euro area, they're small businesses paying more for loans than in the, 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 the core members. And that's bad for economic activity in, in the periphery. But in many ways, it, it, it's worse than that because that's just showing you uh, some measure of, of, of borrowing costs. It's also almost certainly the case that there are higher charges, bank charges, in some of the periphery, and credit is more just more difficult to get. There's tighter collateral rules in the periphery. So it's all, it all, it, it all part of this, the same picture, that credit is more expensive and harder to get for SMEs in, in the periphery. In fact, it's, it's even worse than that, because uh, what you'd like to have at the moment is for higher interest, for lower interest rates in the periphery countries. After all, the periphery countries are in worse shape. So uh, you'd like low, very low interest rates in the periphery, in Spain, in Portugal, in Ireland, and, and, and Greece, and then higher interest rates, let's say, in the core countries in, in Germany. We have the very reverse of that. In fact, it, it's twisted on its head completely what we saw during the boom years. For example, 2005, we had extremely low interest rates in Spain and Ireland, negative real interest rates, which added fuel to the fire and pushed up, uh, pushed up property prices and therefore contribute to the bubble. And we had higher interest rates in Germany, which at the time was growing very sluggishly and needed, needed lower interest rates. Everything has, has now f flipped. Uh, so the, the periphery is caught in many ways in, in a macroeconomic trap that because uh, interest rates are higher, it's going to be very difficult for the periphery countries to make a robust, strong recovery. Uh, and, that's, and, and that's part of the problem with, uh, with, with a single interest rate, and, and that has been uh, exacerbated by financial, uh, financial fragmentation. In fact, it's even worse than that, because uh, what really matters for economic, macroeconomic activity is, is real interest rates. Uh, that is, you adjust the interest rates for inflation. Uh, and inflation is extremely low now in the euro area, so the interest rates faced by Irish SMEs are actually very high in real terms. Uh, they're much higher than they were, for example, in 2005. We had similar nominal interest rates, but since inflation was higher in Ireland in 2005, we had lower, uh, we had, we, we, we had lower uh, real interest rates. So we have, we have in the periphery very uh, economies that, that are weak, that, want, that need very low, ideally negative real interest rates, can't get them because of the financial fragmentation. And therefore, it's, uh, it'll, it'll be crucial uh, for recovery in the periphery, and then for a, a, a sustained, robust growth to have, uh, to have that problem solved. And that's where banking union uh, uh, really comes in. You can't have a situation where we'll have continued divergence in real interest rates fa facing SMEs, because we'll have continued divergence in the, the Eurozone economy. And as Herbert Stein once said, a trend that can't go on won't. That trend of continued divergence between core members and peripherally simply won't be able, uh, won't be able to go on uh, uh, in, in indefinitely. The, the other problem, I think uh, Pat mentioned this, is that uh, because of financial fragmentation, funding costs are different. Banks in the periphery are paying more for the funding than banks in, in core countries. And that means it's difficult for banks in the periphery, or more, uh, it's harder for them to return to profitability. And if we were to have credit growth, and the economy needs credit growth, uh, we need to have banks growing their capital. They can do that with retained profits. But if it's difficult for them to return to profitability, therefore that, that's, uh, that doesn't argue well for credit growth, uh, credit growth in the future. And if you, 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 what's going on here is that uh, we're talking about divergences or differences in, in, in funding costs for banks. Well, it, it reflects in, in, in large way the different funding costs for sovereigns. We know that the Spanish government has to spend more, uh, has to pay more than, than the German government. If you thought that, that the sovereign spreads were going to go to zero, that interest rates were going to converge again for, for governments or for sovereigns, then this really wouldn't be that much of a problem because uh, then the, so the, the interest rates, the funding costs for the banks would converge. But we are almost certainly not looking at a case where we're going to go back to a common interest rate or common borrowing costs for sovereigns. That was true during the boom years. I think the, the, at one stage, the Greek government only had to pay 20 basis points more than the German government. 
we're just not going to go back to that. We're going to live in a monetary union where there's going to be persistent and permanent differences in borrowing costs for the sovereigns. Not least because we're going to have very different debt levels, both public debt levels and private debt levels, and therefore different risks, and those risks will be reflected in different, uh, different sovereign costs. And therefore, uh, uh, if there is such a close link between bank borrowing costs and sovereign funding costs, uh, it would mean that without banking union, we will not get rid of those divergences in, 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 the bank banding, in, in the bank funding costs. Think of, of the U.S., where they do have a genuine banking union. Um, it doesn't matter to the funding costs of a bank in Pennsylvania versus, a, say, a bank in Florida, uh, what's happening to the, 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 the spreads or the borrowing costs of the state of Pennsylvania versus Florida. So they're, they're independent. And that's because they have a genuine uh, monetary union. So you have uh, states or uh, cities, Detroit, for example, that can go bust. And, that, and in the run-up to that, the borrowing costs for the state of the local area would go sky high. But the borrowing costs, the funding costs for the banks are, 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 um, are, are independent of that. And that's because they have a, a genuine, genuine banking union. You don't get into these traps where the, 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 next, the, the, the sovereign banking nexus is, is creating uh, a, a, a downward spiral. Um, just on the SMEs, a, a crucial part of uh, why you want to get banking union, get the funding costs for banks and the SMEs uh, loans down is that SMEs are so important to the European economy um, because we have a big unemployment problem in the euro area, unemployment around 12%, and therefore we need a lot of employment creation. We know that SMEs are a huge part of, of creating, that, that, uh, creating that employment. Therefore, uh, I mean, the macroeconomic consequences uh, are, are, uh, are huge. It is, I should say, just to conclude, it is impossible to, to quantify what they are. So I'm sort of giving you the logic of it. It's very important for the, the macroeconomy that we get banking union and then financial fragmentation. How important for the number on it can't be done, in large part because the economic models that we have don't have, uh, aren't, aren't able to properly account for these sort of fin uh, financial frictions and financial problems. In, in, the, in the 80s and, and 90s, uh, most macroeconomic models that were built didn't have a banking system in, for, in, for example. In many cases, they didn't have money in it at, uh, at all. Uh, it, it, it was thought that uh, lots of the shocks that hit the economy were real shocks, came from oil prices, stuff like that, not from the financial sector. Economists are very busy now trying to put banking systems and money and credit into macroeconomic models. Um, but uh, if, if that's to be done properly at all, it's going to take a long, long time. So it's not, it's not possible to quantify uh, the, uh, the implications for the Irish economy or for the euro economy of banking union, uh, but I think the logic would suggest it's going to be very important.